Every heart returns to the darkness whence it came. Hey y'all, Scott here. I've been staring at this all day, I still don't get it. Anime! Couldn't even finish that word. See, for somebody so into stupid Nintendo games, I definitely need some boundaries set. There's a reason that sign's on my bedroom door. I refuse to consume much entertainment outside of the bare necessities, which is why I'm disgusted by the fact that people like things I don't like. I mean, what the hell is this? People who haven't played Pikmin 3? Maybe... I'm wrong. Maybe I need to broaden my horizons a bit, try new things, and maybe then... I'll never have to give the excuse that I'm not an RPG guy ever again! Then, and only then, will I be able to play Fling Smash with a clear conscience. Never been able to do that before. I've been missing out on so many different types of entertainment in this world! Let's start out by trying This Is Gonna Sting. Anime is considered to be Japanese animation. Animation that's Japanese, whatever the f*** this is. For the people uninformed, such as myself, I'm sorry, I don't know how to describe anime, but I know it when I see it. Many pieces of anime have been considered to be some of the greatest works of art ever created, but you have some stubborn people who just refuse to watch them because... It's anime. Either you're into anime or you're Scott. See, here's the thing. I was way into the idea of being an animator when I was younger, so I was always picky about animation quality. Whenever I'd see anime, specifically the Pokemon anime, I'd always go, why do their lips move like that? I thought that was ridiculous, and half the time I had no idea what was going on in most of these shows. See, that's a big reason why I never got into anime and Pokemon. I was all about efficiency in terms of disliking shit. So whenever I even glance at something anime related, I think to myself, what would six-year-old Scott say? So that's why I didn't personally get into the medium. I know, I'm full of good reasons, right? But come on, Scott, there's gotta be more of a reason you're not into anime, right? Well, I know I'm not alone. Many others refuse to consume this. Looking it up online, this guy says it's because all anime is absurd and makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, because American animation is logic-based. It's a f***ing sponge! Anime just holds a certain kind of stigma. A lot of it can be illogical and hard to follow, characters can be weird and annoying, a lot of anime doesn't pass the do you immediately turn the TV off when somebody walks in test. That's not to say all anime is the same, but that's the general vibe people out of the know get from the medium. They're weird, horny cartoons from Japan. Now I don't dislike foreign cartoons or anything, some of my favorite series were made in Arizona. It's just ever since I was a kid, this style never appealed to me. And as I grow older, whenever I get a whiff of anime most of the time, I utter those sweet, sweet words. What the f*** was that? But just because I don't like the anime style doesn't mean I don't like Japan. Are you kidding me? Japan is one of the most amazing countries out there. They made Wario. I don't enjoy anime, but I do enjoy Japanese culture and video games. So if I play some anime games, I may finally find out how to enjoy anime. Emphasis on how. You may say, well, Scott, instead of playing games based on anime you've never seen, why not watch the anime the games are based on first? <laughs> Last time I tried to watch anime, I looked up how to and they just told me to stop, so I think this is the only way I can. I mean, after Mighty Number no. 9 denounced anime fans in its trailer, I knew there was no way I was ever gonna watch some. I always listen to what Mighty Number no. 9 has to say. And make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. Yeah, Mighty Number no. 9's bitch. There's a reason it comes with a name tag. Don't tell Mighty Number no. 9, but I've officially converted my entire living space to be pro all things anime. I even have a jersey and everything. So now I just have to figure out what anime games I should buy. After searching for some on QVC, I am at a loss. Well, I decided to check out some local game stores for some options, and I definitely did not walk away empty-handed, but to some extent, I did. I have no idea what any of these words mean. Three? All right, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelists of the Roses. That's the name of my florist. I don't have as many questions as I thought I would. Lucky for me, I bought a Game Boy Advance video cartridge for this show and Dragon Ball GT, so I can in fact get up to date on what the hell these shows are, but these are my last resort. If I'm just too confused to go on and play these, I'll watch these as a reference point, but overall, I'm going into these suckers blind. We've got Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh, Naruto, One Piece, Bakugan, to Blob 2. In addition to those, I looked up anime games on the Nintendo Switch eShop and found some original games with anime art styles. So pretty much all of these aren't based on any pre-existing anime, they just have that classic anime art style. It's pretty hard to not consider these things anime, nobody goes, Oh man, is that a Van Gogh? My girlfriend is a mermaid. You didn't know? I picked out five anime games that really spoke to me. Let me download Arcade Archives Frogger and we'll make it six. Might as well start with Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. That title kept going. Dragon Ball is probably one of the most iconic anime franchises out there. Pretty much every year there's new games coming out. Every time I blink they add a new letter to the title. How do you even properly say this title. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. 
So it looks like Tenkaichi 3 was published by Atari, and Funimation Entertainment had their fingers in it too. And that is just a vat of letters and numbers. And Bandai Namco Games definitely put some work into this one here, and we can't forget Spike. Who could forget Spike? And Cryware too. I'm sure the developers said it wouldn't be Budokai Tenkaichi 3 without Cryware. We get a fun opening movie, and it looks pretty good. Title screen appears. Press any button to continue. Okay. Well, there is a nice reference menu so I can learn more about each of the characters, and you know what? I really like this feature. Let me read up on Great Ape. That should do. Time to play. So this is a fighting game. I can pick one of these thousands of characters. Like, my god, they really went above and beyond on the character selection. I'll pick Baby Vegeta. They didn't even have to put the name there. With no context, if I saw this for the first time... Oh, yeah, that's Baby Vegeta. All right, match starts. Let me move to the side. Jesus Christ! I lost. You wake up thinking you're a Baby Vegeta, just end up being an Apple guy. What? What happened? Oh, damn it, Dr. Jero's name is copyrighted? Run. That was a game. If I was a fan of Dragon Ball, this game would have been pretty cool. There was a lot of fan service, and there was so much stuff to do. It was pretty hard to enjoy Tenkaichi 3 not being a Dragon Ball fan, though. Uh, so maybe Tenkaichi 2 will help explain some things. Before we play, I just felt the need to say I don't trust any logo that doesn't use impact font. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2! Oh, thank God. Well, so far, these games' openings are the exact same damn thing. And playing the game... Yeah, this is pretty much the exact same damn thing. Can Piccolo survive? No. Well, let's move on to Naruto the Broken Bond by Ubisoft. You know Ubisoft. Watchdogs for Wii U. Naruto Broken Bond. So this guy grows some outhouses. Old man dies. Game is a blatant clone of Sonic Adventure. I die. It says, I'm not giving up. Sure. Let's move on to the stuff I got on Nintendo Switch. Anime style games. One of these has got to show me the light. Help me get anime. See, I get this. Definitely need more frog-based animes today. Oh, well, here we have Tokyo School Life, a visual novel. These types of visual novels are like books if Scholastic was really horny. Tokyo School Life is developed by M2. Great guys over at M2. They do a lot of the classic game porting. They brought over Sega, Konami, Nintendo games over to newer platforms, so I think we're in good hands here. Oh, f there's gonna be girls in this game? So I get to name myself in this game? Yup, nothing screams at Tokyo School Life more than a name like John Smith. Yeah, you know, I'll enter the first name, but Smith is okay with me. So we're a guy going all the way to Tokyo to attend school and maybe, just maybe, meet some cute girls. All right, I'll play a bit of this and get back to you on my thoughts. So Tokyo School Life was pretty interesting. I got to join up with Dan to save Vestroya and Earth from the ultimate evil. There were eight worlds, 17 brawlers to choose from, over 35 Bakugan, I might have played the wrong game. So Tokyo School Life follows Scat Smith. He runs into this girl, she calls him a molster. He goes to school, meets two other girls, they're all in cahoots. This girl Sakura really has a thing for me. She gets incredibly close to me, that really freaked me the f out on my first playthrough, but by my fourth I was okay with it. Apparently I have to live with them. I hate when that happens. It's a good thing that girl's moving in this scene, I left this game on for nine days and the image only partially burned into the screen. So this girl thinks I'm a bad guy, but this other girl says I ate her rice. I have never seen a bad person eat her rice. Moving the right stick fast forwards through everything so we can cruise through this entire thing. Uh, don't worry, sound effects are still included. Did I snap her neck? Well, we sort of still get a good idea of what's going on this way. I said sorta. Okay, I beat Tokyo School Life. Pretty good visual novel, pretty bad Bakugan game. Next up is Senren Kagura Reflections, so I have to help this girl search herself. I found a gun. This involves massaging her. Well, it's a good thing I wore my Mickey gloves. Now after all this, we play a minigame where we slap her thighs. You know, I said I wouldn't watch this unless I needed explanations. Now might be a good time. There's Galgun 2, a shooter where we shoot hormones at demon girls. Uh, panty party. I can't. I don't get it. Nothing makes sense. I don't want anything to do with any of this. Anymore! I was right about anime. I don't need anything new in my life. I don't care about anime. It's weird. I don't like it. Oh, hey, cool portal. Oh, God, lines. You've done it now. You've really done it. You think you can get away with not giving a shit about anime? Oh, no, I'm starting to question my ability to. It's human nature to give a shit about anime. And you, my friend, are the only one to reject it. Really? The only one I've noticed. And because of that, you will Who even are you? I am the protector of all things anime. I am the guardian of virginity. I am Dr. Anna May. Now please don't. I 
destroy. I think various animes are completely acceptable and wonderful pieces of art and entertainment, but I'm just not interested or invested in any particular anime or anime in general. I find that hard to believe. Damn, you're right. Oh, so that's what we're doing now, huh? Well, prepare for my secret weapon. Humility. All things anime. I'm sorry, I just never grew up with you, I never understood you. But that doesn't mean I don't respect you. I can really use some help right now. Please. I'll just finish you off myself. I'm sick of people like you disrespecting my world! It's time to succumb to your doom! Just because people aren't into something doesn't make them not respected. I still don't know what the hell Fire Emblem means. And my respect for anime has given me power. And I know exactly what will get anybody into anime to back off. What the f*** was that?